Hi, welcome. Welcome to listen to a lab 10 minute short lecture. This lecture is about darkness filtration film hoods. What do you need to know? A ductless filtration film hood, how it works. Basically, a ductless film hood consists of the few components. Start with a such opening, where you have the air sucking from the outside environment. Um, then you have the enclosure hood. Um, on top of the enclosure hood, you found a um, HEPA filter, the filter to remove powder chemicals followed by a molecular activated carbon filter to filter off liquids and vapor chemicals and also come with a suction fan to create the negative pressure in the hood. You are aware that darkless film hood do not have dark and the stack. The benefit of having a darkless film hood, um, it is easy to install and the installation can be very fast. Unlike the ducted film hood, the installation is very complicated, it's permanently installed. Um, you are, the installer do not only consider the air exhaust um, blower, the installer for the ducted film hood should also consider the air intake, uh, the makeup air in the room to ensure an air balance in the room. Another benefit of the ductless film hoods it is that um, the film hood can be installed at any workstations. So no limitation in the number of ductless film hoods since they do not need air intake from outside. That would, the ductless film hood would not affect the air balance in the room. Another obvious benefit of the ductless film hood is that it does not uh, consume acorn air. So it is very energy uh, saving. Unlike the ducted film hood, which draw out the acorn air from the laboratory continuously, so the ducted film hood is one of the most energy consuming equipment in the lab. So having a ductless film hood in your lab potentially save you at least 10,000 uh, of uh, energy um, bill uh, per year per unit of film hoods. Ductless film hood can also be used for large variety of chemical applications. It's some even the heavy duty one. You can see from these um, slides. The, of the most common questions uh, people ask about ductless film hood is how it can be safe for chemists to use a ductless film hood. First of all, a good ductless film hood will need to conform to the international standards. One of the most stringent standards out there is the F French NFX 15211, followed with the USA SAFA 9. And the ductless film hood should also comply to the local use regulation, uh, which we need to perform the LEV test uh, annually. There's five main requirements um, to protect the chemist uh, using a ductless film hood. The first requirement is the air phase velocity at the such opening. The second one is the containment capacity of the enclosure. Third, the filter efficiency, how well the filter filter off the vapors or the gas chemicals. Number four, the filter capacity, which means the, the capacity of the filter to absorb how many grams of chemicals. Number five, the applications validations. The suppliers, the manufacturer of the Douglas Film Hood should provide the application validation for the potential buyer. Six, the usage of the labor to inform and to um, educate the user. Let's go into one by one. Number one, the requirement of having an air phase velocity at the such opening. 
the standards uh, required the FS velocity to achieve at least 0.4, 2.6 meter per second. That is similar to 80 to 120 of feet per minute of FS velocity at the standard such opening height. Another features need to be built in is to have the alarm capability when the FES velocity is incorrect, either is too low or too high. Number two, the containment capacity of the enclosure. This is done by going through a containment test. The typical containment test is using a SF6 tracer gas. The tracer gas SF6 is emitted inside the film hoods at the rate of 4 litres per minute. SF6 is a synthetic gas and is very light and you cannot find SF6 in the normal lab environment. So whatever level of uh, SF6 detected outside the film hoods uh, will show the containment capability of that film hoods. The measurement is done to a nose level of the dummy outside of the film hoods. The level of the SF6 should be less than 0.05 ppm. Number three, the filter efficiency. The concentration of the chemical downstream from the filter should not be more than 1% of the total PLTWA of the chemicals that they handle inside the film hoods. This is in line with the uh, country regulation. For instance, in Malaysia, use regulation on, uh, published a list of PLTWA for various chemicals in the shed schedule one. Example of PLTWA, um, of course, is very, very much from chemical to chemical, and it, it is expressed in ppm for liquids and milligram per cubic meter for powder. The high toxicity chemicals, example like formaldehyde, has a low PLTWA of 0.3 part per million. The medium or the average toxicity chemical like carbon tetrachloride has a PLTWA of 5 ppm, where else the low toxicity chemicals like methanol uh, has a PLTWA of 200 ppm. The lower the PLTWA of a chemical, the higher its toxicity level. PLTWA is published separately for each individual chemicals. You can find this information from the SDS safety data sheets, especially in section number eight. But in reality, laboratory handle more than one types of chemicals. So the effect of the mixture of chemicals, and uh, no one really know the real health impact. But one thing is for sure, it is danger. So we need to determine what is allowed PLTWA of a mixture of chemicals. So internationally, the standards uh, specify that the maximum PLTWA of a mixture of chemicals should not be more than 1% of the total PLTWA, which is equals to 100 times below the authorized concentration of a um, PLTWA. So the user is safe and is protected. Number four, the filter capacity. The filter will need to filter off up to the max 1% of PLTWA. The manufacturer should uh, publish the quantity of chemical retained in the filter. So for instance, in China, um, specify that the manufacturer required to publish at least 20 chemicals. Whereas for standard like NFX 15211, the manufacturer should publish as many filter capability as possible. There's no limitations. You can, you can download a lab uh, full chemical listings from our websites. This is the example of the chemical listings. You can see here, it publish capacities in the gram of every chemicals. One C column is for one layer of carbon filter. If you have two layers of carbon filters, for the first layers, uh, these are the capacity of the filters. 
um, in terms of gram of that specific chemicals. Number five, the application validation. Prior to any sales of the ductless film hood, the supplier shall approve the intended application and be responsible for it. This is very crucial to ensure that you get a proper uh, and a suitable uh, ductless film hood to provide maximum protections. The form that you fill up will be uh, verified by the experts uh, from uh, the, the R&D lab. Number six, the use of the lever. A lever will be displayed on every film hood. The lever will provide information like the, the list of chemical validated, the expected filter lifetime, and also the detection systems applicable to this specific Dallas film hoods. The supplier should also provide the service to revalidate um, your applications. When, it, when there's time, you change your application or the combination of chemicals in near future. These are some of the examples of the actual installations in Malaysia. You can see here, uh, they are using it to contain the auto titrator. This is another one from the industries, uh, semicon industries, use it for micro soldering process. Cutlass stream hood is widely used in the industries. Thank you for listening to this short lecture. Contact us for more information and do um, visit our website at tms-lab.com.